Hi, welcome back to Physics Teacher. This was a question on the Sir Isaac Newton contest, which is a high school physics contest from Waterloo University. Give it a try, and I'll be right back with the solution. So in this question, we have two crates, both with the exact same mass, m. So I'm not going to differentiate between their two masses since they're the same. And they're connected by a spring, which initially is not stretched. And they are lie flat on a horizontal floor. So there's no incline in this question. Now there is friction, so we have to care about frictional forces. And we have a coefficient of friction with some value mu. Now it says with what minimum force must we apply here on one crate so that you can just start moving the second crate. And we need to have our answer in terms of mu m g. So let's start this question by analyzing, let's call this crate two. So we're gonna analyze crate two and we're going to use forces to do that. So what forces are acting on crate two? Well, when this, when crate one is moved, let's call this crate one, when crate one is moved and the spring is stretched, we will have some sort of spring force acting on the crate. Let's call that Fx. And then we will also have some frictional force acting on the crate as well in the opposite direction. So we can analyze this with Newton's second law, where the sum of all forces and I'm going to specifically do it in our x direction, which is our horizontal direction, equals mass times acceleration in x. Now, since it's just starting to move, our acceleration is going to be zero. And let's make our positive direction to the right in this case. So the sum of all forces, well, we have our spring force in our positive direction minus our frictional force in the negative direction is now going to equal zero. From Hooke's law, we know that this spring force is equal to kx. And we know our equation for friction, it's mu fn. And in this case, we have we do have gravity that acts down on the crate, fg. And we have a normal force that acts up. Now, since there's no acceleration in our vertical component, those two will be, will be equal and opposite. So they will be balanced. And we can calculate gravity by using this formula. So I can replace the normal force with mg. So that leaves us with mu mg. All right, and rearranging, we get kx equal to mu mg. Now that's going to be good for later. Right now, there's nothing we really need to solve for here because this is what we want to know, the applied force. So now let's look at the first mass. Now when looking at the first mass, as we start to pull it, this is going to be stretched and we want to pull it until this gets stretched enough that it starts to pull the second one. And that's it. We don't want to pull it any more than that. All right. Now to do that, we can't use forces. You could if you know calculus, uh, but because this is high school physics, we're not going to put calculus into the problem. And why make things more difficult anyways? Instead, we're going to use energies. The reason why we use energy is because as we pull this and the string gets spread, sorry, as the string gets stretched, the value for x changes. And therefore, the force is changing as well. So instead, we're going to use the work energy formula, where total work equals change in kinetic energy. All right, so what work is being done on this one? Well, obviously, we're doing some work ourselves by an applied force. So we have an applied force over some displacement delta d. But in this case, if we move it a certain displacement delta d, it's going to be the exact same amount that this spring moves from its equilibrium position x. So I'm just going to call delta d x. And then it'd be cos of theta, where theta is the angle between these two vectors. But since they are parallel and in the same direction, 
the cos of 0 is 1. All right, what else is being done? What, else, what other work is being done? Well, we have friction on this box as well, force of friction. Now, it's in the opposite direction as displacement. So that's a cos of 180. That's where we get negative work. So we're going to have minus the force of friction times the displacement x. Then we also have, as we pull this across the floor, the string the string, the spring is getting stretched and it's going to be pulling back on this crate. So we will have some f of x. And it is also in the opposite direction of d. Now I can't simply write minus, um, I can't simply write this minus fx times x because that is actually wrong. The reason it's wrong is because just as I told you before, this is changing. The more x changes, the more this changes. So what we're going to do instead is if we were to analyze Hooke's law, well, it's a linear relationship. So if this is force, which equals kx, and this is x, it's a linear relationship. It's not a constant. So to find the work done, we could find the area under the graph, which is this triangle. Now the area under the triangle is one half times the height, which is kx, times the length, which is x. So it ends up being one half kx squared. So I am going to replace this not with simply kx squared, but one half kx squared. So this is minus f at f, I can also replace um, with this, just like we did before. So mu mg x minus one half kx squared. All right, our change in kinetic energy. We don't actually want to change the kinetic energy of block one. We don't want to have it moving from zero up to high speeds. We're just going to slightly move it until this is stretched enough to move block two. And then that's it. We're not going to move block one anymore. So it's not really changing in kinetic energy from its initial position here to its final position here. It'll be at rest in both cases. And that is because we only care about that minimum force required to actually stretch this spring enough that it will pull block two. So this is actually going to be zero in this case. All right, so now we can rearrange to solve for fa, because that is what we're looking for. So bring the other terms to the other side. We have mu mg times x plus 1 half kx squared. We can divide through by x, since we know x is not 0. And we get the applied force equal to, here we have mu mg plus 1 half and this is kx, but from where I started from when I analyzed box 2, I know that kx equals mu mg. So we have mu mg plus a half mu mg, which is 3 halves mu mg, or 1.5.